everybody, Seth Daly here, and I'm recording this video on a Friday night. Sometimes Friday night means date night, uh, because we're in real estate, sometimes Friday nights means contract negotiation. So tonight I'm reviewing a couple offers for some properties we recently put on the market, and it just so happens uh, the buyers are submitting offers, and here I am on Friday night fielding phone calls and talking through stuff. So I wanted to give a couple pointers. If you are a buyer that is considering buying, uh, or if you're an agent that is is working as a buyer's agent primarily, uh, here's some lessons that I've learned. I try to incorporate these all the time when I'm working as a buyer's agent, uh, but there are lessons that I've learned more from the listing side, more from representing sellers. And so a couple of tips that came to mind tonight as, uh, as these offers have come in. Uh, number one, make sure that you ask the buyer, the seller's agent to confirm receipt. It is amazing to me when offers come in from a buyer's agent and we don't hear from them. They assume the email worked. They assume we had no questions, all sorts of things. When you are submitting an offer, it is a chance to build rapport with the party on the other side. It's a chance to build rapport with the listing agent, which means take every opportunity you can text, call, email, make sure they receive the offer. What I'll normally do is I'll call. Uh, I will try to get them on the phone. If I do get them on the phone, we'll have a bit of a conversation. Again, it's all about rapport building. And at the end of it, I'll say, great, as soon as we hang up here, I'm gonna hit send and you're gonna have an offer in your inbox. And would you please confirm receipt? I even ask for it twice. I tell them I'm gonna send it, I send it, I ask them to confirm receipt in the email and that is in the subject line of the email as well. So number one, please make sure you get receipt confirmed of your offer. Number two, uh, you have a team. When you're a buyer's agent, you're working not just with you, but you've got your title company, you've got your lender, you've got the home inspector. And in this part of the process, I lean heavily on our lender. So an offer came in tonight on one of our listings and I was surprised. Well, I, I wasn't surprised. I just realized it was a missed opportunity. I was surprised I didn't hear from the lender. Whenever we submit an offer, one of our goals is to say, we'll call up our lender, a loan officer that we know well, and say, hey, I just sent this offer over. Um, would you please call the listing agent? Here's their cell phone number. And would you please extol the benefits of this buyer and how they're a really strong buyer, how you are a really strong lender and how we're gonna get this deal done and we're gonna close it uh, in the time frame that we specified. I go over with the lender all the terms of the offer, uh, which by the way, pro tip, this is one reason why we make sure that we work with lenders that focus on purchase transactions. What I just said could not be done if I was working with an online lender from halfway across the country that could care less if this file actually closes or not. So point number two, make sure you have your lender call, talk you up as the agent and also talk the buyer up. Uh, again, it's all about rapport building. Um, point number three, uh, this particular buyer put in an escalation clause and I feel bad for him because the point of an escalation clause, right? It says, Hey, we're going to offer X, but we will go up to Y if there's other offers in. And here's the struggle. They were the first offer that came in, which means the escalation clause isn't in use. Now they don't know this yet. They don't know that they were the first offer. They were rushed to become the first offer in on this property and they put in an escalation clause. And I want you to put yourself in the, in the shoes of a seller, in the mind of a seller for a minute. If you get an offer at X, but, but they would go up to Y if you get another offer, as a seller, what are you gonna do? And the answer is you're gonna wait for another offer. So here we had a buyer that if they had structured this offer differently, they might've actually gotten it accepted tonight. But because they put somewhere in their structure, a, a term that literally incentivizes the seller to wait, Seller's not going to accept it tonight. They're going to sleep on it. And chances are by this time tomorrow, we're going to have multiple offers. And here's my last comment. And it really is the first comment chronologically, but you'll see why I place it here. If the buyer's agent had called me this afternoon and asked me when I was going to present, he might've got a different answer. He didn't ask for that. It's what we would call a tie down. So here's my advice. If you're a buyer's agent and you are planning to be the first offer in, Okay. You either, you either want to be the first offer or you want to be the last offer. The first offer wins because they're the first in the door. The last offer wins because they have the most information, right? Hey, your offer number 10 out of 10, put your best foot forward. That's news that the first offer doesn't get. But this person had first mover advantage. They were the first offer in the door. But that advantage is squandered if you don't take advantage of it. Here's one way to take advantage of it. 
if you're a buyer's agent and you're going to submit an offer and you call the agent that day. So in this case, the house went on the market Friday morning, reviewing this offer Friday night, but we have an open house on Saturday and Sunday. If I was this buyer's agent, I would have called and I would have said, listen, we really like your house. It's our top choice, but the reality is my buyers lost a couple other properties and we're going to submit an offer and we're going to submit a strong offer and we're going to do it tonight. But if I got you a strong offer tonight, how quickly could your seller look at it and make a decision? Asking that question before you ever submit the offer is critical. If the agent says to you, uh, it doesn't really matter when you get me the offer, I'm not going to look at it until Monday, then you might be wasting the opportunity of rushing to get your offer in first. If they say to you, you know what? You get me a strong offer tonight. Seller's going to look at it tonight and I get back to you tonight with an answer. Now, all of a sudden you've tied the listing agent down. And as long as you deliver on that promise, you might get your offer accepted and they might cancel the open houses. I've seen it go both ways. I've had it go both ways as a buyer's agent and as a listing agent. But again, four principles that I've learned over time that give you the best possible shot as a buyer's agent or as a buyer uh, in getting your offer accepted. Hope that's helpful. Take care.